The entire world is struggling to keep the lights on. Meantime, as we've said, uh, hitting its highest level since 2008 today. Tom Closer from We are in either the worst energy crisis since the 1970s or darn close to it now. We're in the midst of an energy crunch, perhaps unlike we've ever seen. The global energy cost is on the rise. So that means that business costs are on the rise. Your assets that keep the lights on, that keep the water flowing, they cost money. And how do you manage those assets to create the most amount of optimization? mCloud. Using artificial intelligence to bring you next level performance, drawing from technology used in the world's most demanding industries, Asset Care takes the health, performance, and efficiency of your assets to new heights. It goes straight to your bottom line. No upfront fees, no hidden costs, and one simple price per connected asset. Combined with continuous performance improvements, you can measure. Every aspect of asset management, from operations to optimization to maintenance under one umbrella, enabling you to get the most out of your assets. MCloud Asset Care. You are watching America Trends. I'm Mary Burke Godwin, and we are having a really interesting conversation. If you are a business owner, you're going to want to listen to this. Annie Ellis, employment lawyer. We're talking about all sorts of important things that business owners need to know regarding law and their employees. Uh, we were talking before the break about if you suspect your uh, employee maybe has been drinking on the job or has a, has a problem. Um, and I think every case is different depending on the employee. But, you know, I, I, you can fire them on the spot, like you were saying. If you test them and they show positive to be over a certain blood alcohol level or maybe an illicit drug, you can fire them on the spot. Is that correct? Correct. And you have, in all states, I mean, that's across the board. Right. If someone's under the influence and you've got evidence to prove it, then they're out of there. Okay. And if you, though, want to take a different approach of, hey, I'm going to send them home, get them sober, and then for the night, you know, and then let's discuss tomorrow, like, hey, we'll support you to go to a, a rehab or something. Um, you know, is there any tricky fine lines that employers would need to work, think about then? I find the substance abuse employee issues to be some of the hardest because when they show up to work under the influence, that's not protected activity. But when they come to their employer and say, I need help, I want to go to rehab, that is. And mm -hmm. legally, we're probably going to have to give it to them depending on where you are. There's leaves of absence where they get you know, a guaranteed job protection, they get their insurance continuing to cover. And so it's a fine line. And, and what I typically want to look at is, is it a first offense? Have we had ongoing issues? Is this the employee that for years has been constantly showing up under the influence or been late or mm -hmm. been sick on January 1st right, or, right, July right, 5th. Right, or July 5th. Yes. And so you want to look at the totality. We all know those guys. <laughs> yeah, you want to look at the totality of it um, yeah. and make your decision based on all these different factors if it's something you want to go through. And then if you do decide, okay, we're going to commit to this person and we're going to put them through leave and we're going to help them back, you do want to make sure that they are on a very clear written plan when they come back that mm -hmm. has ongoing testing and that will give you the right to terminate employment immediately if they violate any of the they violate the terms. Mm -hmm. That's really smart. I mean, I do think that people should support people getting help if they need it or they want it, uh, if they want it specifically. Um, but then, yes, you have to cover your cover yourself if they come back and they don't, you know, they haven't been successful in getting their treatment. Um, so I want to segue into California is trying to change the way publicly held corporations structure their boards because uh, they have requirements for certain diversity currently. Is that is that nationwide? Do all states have that? No, not that okay. I'm aware of. Okay. I, I can't think of another state that would have something similar, but we've tried it a couple but times. But this is California. Yeah, so, we, we yeah. like to pave the way for difficult yes. regulations for business owners. So what is this stating? Certain boards of corporations have to have a certain mix of diversity? So there was two two shots. Um, the first one was trying to require publicly held corporations in California to have a certain percentage of women on the board. And then okay. the second one was a diversity, um, mm -hmm. persons of color. Yeah. And so the first one just went to trial, um, mm -hmm. and that was deemed unconstitutional because the position was the state can't tell me how to run my business, publicly held or not. And so we'll mm -hmm. have to see where everything shakes out with the other one. But I, I think it's interesting, it, in theory, uh -huh. uh, in a vacuum, I like the idea because because I do think women should be more represented on yes. particularly boards, but I don't live in a vacuum and I don't live in theory. This is the real world, the real world and, right. and do we want that much regulation over business? Right, that makes sense. So did that business owner win, did you say, the first one? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, 
And then the second one, we're still waiting Correct. to hear what happened. Um, okay, and the last topic, this is a big one, is insurance and business owners, you know, making sure they have the right policies in place for their particular business. Is that right? To cover, it's hard to know all the things that you might need to cover, right? <laughs> it is, and when you're setting up a business, sometimes the HR stuff is put to the side because you want to focus on the money making, not the right. cost center, which is what HR is. Yeah. But I can't tell you how many times I have a client that gets a lawsuit, very first lawsuit, and they, and they say, well, I've got insurance for this. And I say, okay, send me the policy. And they don't. And so what you they want They don't have the right coverage. DNO, directors and officers oh. policies, which is the most common one that folks grab, excludes employment claims. You need specific insurance policies for employment litigation and you want to look at it carefully because that stuff we were talking about earlier, the wage and hour, that's usually going to be excluded. So you want to pay extra to make sure you get coverage for that. Unfortunately, you need to pay extra. but And also, again, hire an attorney who knows all of these little ins and outs. And, you know, when I, let's say I want to go get medical insurance and I don't have the time to read it all carefully and I think they're not going to send sell me something that's not going to cover me in all the ways. And then I get a bill for $500. I say, oh, wait. They will. <laughs> it didn't cover my whatever test I needed to get done. Um, so... That's really important. So what else do they need to know for insurance? It's covering employees. I would, I, I always recommend that employers get to their broker and say, if an employee has a lawsuit or a claim against me, do I have insurance for that? And if not, can you send me a policy and tell me everything that's not covered? That's what I want to know, where the mm. gaps and the holes are. Tell me everything that's not covered. not covered. That's a really great question. Anything else you need to ask them? Um, make sure you don't let the policy lapse. I've had that happen before. Mm. And make sure you follow the notification procedures. I have had clients that have waived their rights under insurance policies because they tendered it on the 31st day instead of the 30th day. And because do they not automatically roll over? I guess it just depends on what you're... It depends, particularly the type of policies that I'm talking about. You have to go through rigid disclosures every year. Have you had any HR issues? Do you, do you have any pending claims? Do you think there's claims coming in? And so it's really going to depend on the market right now for this employment litigation policy I'm hearing from brokers is very tough. Premiums are high. I Deductibles are, are enormous. And a lot because of... Because people are... are because of the, go after their employer, the litigation, the yes. habit of lit litigation, and a lot of the insurance carriers are pulling out of California for this type of insurance policy. So get it now. This does not surprise me whatsoever. No, it does <laughs> I mean, me. living in California, we are very uh, Sue happy. We are. I grew up hearing that phrase, and I think it's getting worse. Right. It is, well, and this this climate of how hostile and upset and emotional everyone is. Yes. That's why people sue. Right. They don't sue because they woke up and say, "Oh, I think the labor code was violated against me today." <laughs> right. Well, and they see a TikTok that's saying. Saying, you know, they're getting aggravated by a topic and then they, it just, yep. yeah, it's getting out of hand. Well, Annie Ellis, thank you so much for being here today. AnnieEllisLaw.com. You can go to her website to check out all your questions or hire her to be the person to handle your questions and uh, so you don't get sued. <laughs> or Thanks, if you do, she's the woman to help you. Thank you so much for tuning in to America Trends. We're here every night of the week, Monday through Friday on BizTV.com. Have a good night.